Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Radio Show, a once proud member of the now defunct Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. The amazing Adrian Miller is in as guest co-host. We are joined by actress Christine DeBell as she drives through the mountains and stops to gaze at chickens. If you enjoy the show, like and follow the Life 1069 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter, or tune in live on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM, or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence. Hey, welcome yep. to the Life Radio Show. I'm your host Don Smith. We're uh, we are not again. We are not in uh, the WWSU studio today. We are actually in Wiley's Comedy Club showroom again. Uh, seems to be a lot of these shows happening in here now. Yeah, which is which is good. I, I don't know what's going on with the radio show, radio show, but uh, we it, it's all up in the air right now because. Uh, Stuff I'm not going to get into. <laughs> well, it's it's appropriate to be Wait. in the shrine of comedy and that entertainment. That is true. That is true. Uh, my guest co-host yeah, for today, it's Adrian. More Miller. Fun. It, much, yeah, much more fun. It's always because it, when I'm in the studio, I have a producer that's like breathing down my neck and like watching everything I do, and we like to dance along the FCC line anyway. So that's. <laughs> yeah, I get edited out at least once every yeah. time I'm on air because I get around. Oh yeah, yeah. and yeah. I and I have such a potty mouth. I'm going to try to be really good. Um. That's that's fine. We're pre-recording, so I can edit you. <laughs> oh, oh. So if I say, oh, never mind. I'm not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> well, one time I think somebody, on, I think someone went like boop, 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 or whatever, and then you took that as the bleeping noise. Oh yeah. Anytime yeah, I yeah. swore, Ho- Holly shock. That yes. was fun. Uh, anyway, uh, on the phone with us is uh, Christine DeBell. How's it going? Hi. She was driving down a hill, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, in the mountains where there isn't any cell, but thankfully it was just in and out, and I knew when I got to the bottom, I'd get you back. Awesome, awesome. That's <laughs> that, A lot of people know I'm usually at the bottom when they get there. When they get there, they'll get to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was very funny. <laughs> perfect perfect for, for, for a day at, at a comedy club. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, so welcome to the show. It's good to it's good to finally get you on. This is uh, our third try, I think. We had to reschedule a couple times, but here yeah, you are. Yeah, I know. Glad, happy to be here. Happy to happy to be with you guys on this gorgeous, however possibly not gorgeous, where you are. <laughs> We're in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. It's it's sunny out. It's still it cold is, as hell. It is sunny, yeah. and it is about forty five when yeah, I came so in. It's not bad. I yeah. left my coat in the car. Oh wow! Huh? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> You're wow. the oh yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Once you have sub zero weather, forty five feels like spring weather. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. It's been cold enough days now. I think I have fully the my blood has been replaced by antifreeze. I'm from the Chicago right. originally, Perfect. so it's just like a genetic thing <laughs> you're born with. <laughs> So, Christine, you, you have uh, you have been acting for a while. Tell us a little bit a little bit about yourself and uh, where you started out and how you got started. Yeah, I um, I started doing uh, well. I started modeling when I was in middle school. I think Macy's oh, wow. had a program. Macy's in Albany, New York, had a modeling program. So I, um, because I think at some point. You know, I, I saw a picture of Twiggy mm-hmm. and said, oh, that's what someone who's tall and thin with no breath is supposed to be doing. <laughs> because obviously it was a time when, you know, I call it the va ba ba boom girl. That was not me, right? So it's like I'm not the most popular girl in the room at all. So, yeah, so I started modeling and then... Um, I did in school, I did a high school production of The Sound of Music. I played Liesl because I, not Liesl, no, 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 Martha, yeah. younger girl. Because I had studied voice for years and years, uh, I don't know, I guess, because I have a very musical family and I didn't want to play an instrument, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> so I studied voice. So I get the part of Martha and then that year... The Matt Cason Theater, which is now actually quite well known in in, um, in New England, in 
uh, the McHayden came to my hometown. And they, their last production was The Sound of Music. So I, I auditioned, and they said, wow, yeah, that's terrific, but your voice is way too mature to play a young girl, so you're going to be the naughty postulant. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, I did four years of summer stock, all different musical theater and around. It was awesome. And then at some point, I, uh, uh, you know, it was the beginning that is still, you know, where I, in the, in the, you know, on the edge of the Berkshires in upstate New York, it's very, a lot of weekenders. So the woman who lived across from us and became quite good friends with my mother was from New York. And I, I said, can I come down and stay with you? Or maybe I, I don't know. It gets, you know, when you get to be my age, it's like, wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I had always wanted to go into Ford to see if I could become a Ford model. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really just to skip ahead one second. It's interesting. People will always say to me, oh, how, how, did, you, how did you get started? How did you get it with Ford? And it's, it's like now it's just not the same. I walked into the Ford office in New York, and the girl looked at me and said, do you work here, this receptionist? And I said, oh, wow. no, but I'd like to. And so she said, have a seat. I met Eileen Ford within a half an hour and started uh, modeling for them. Wow. Yeah. The 70s seem like a magical time (laughs) because... Like the last person we talked to, he's like, "Yeah, I was kind of doing. I was, I just, you know, moved to LA, and I, you know, around the pool, we had this prominent person and this other prominent person, and you know, like working behind the scenes and a bunch of things. And they got me, you know, they were like, you 'You're pretty funny. Why don't you come try this? Let's go. There's this place called the Comedy Store that just opened, <laughs> and then pretty much they're like, you're a funny guy. Like he did like an open mic, and then it's like, yeah, I started performing yeah. there, and just off to the race. Yeah, and you're like, what? <laughs> What a magical time this sounds like. You could just walk into right, places. Exactly. Exactly. It's just not the same anymore. No. Right? People say, how did you get started in the business like of acting? And I said, look, it's not easy. But give me your picture and resume and I'll send it to my agent. Or here's your address. Send it to my yeah. agent. I've always tried to help young actors because it's incredibly difficult to even to get an agent. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It's not even, uh, forget about even, you know, auditioning or, you know, get get yourself a good agent first. No matter what the field is, it seems like first you got to convince a gatekeeper and someone who's going to go to bat for you right. before right. you and can even talk to anybody. Right, and that's really hard. Oh, I hope we didn't lose her. Uh, but, oh, okay. The, the business now is that, you know, there was a kid who ended up, I say kid. <laughs> <laughs> that ended up at a, at a film festival with a film that he shot on his iPhone. And oh, yeah. so now you can, you can, you know, make your own movie. You can submit to, you don't have to, you're not, it's, it's changed in so many ways in that way for the better, I think. It's more inclusive. More people can start on their own. It's not like, oh, you've got to have an agent, you've got to have this, you, yeah. you know. You know, and, and I was kind of lucky in that regard. You know, obviously I, we had a party. I was at a party and met the woman who became my agent and West Coast mother for years. And uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of the same thing. Give an agent. No, you want one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, in, in the Midwest, there just aren't as many. There just aren't a lot. There are a handful because they're, they're down in Cincinnati, but yeah, not, say, not many in Dayton. I was going to say, that's something I, yeah. <laughs> I've i talked to my boyfriend about. I'm like, well, I perform and stuff. Should I? Because somebody, the, they have a, the Cincinnati, the Heyman talent right, or whatever. Right. And I'm like, should I get an agent? What do you? And he's just like, ah, it's not the same. I mean, it's just uh, here in Cincinnati. It's uh. No, I, I do know a lot of people that go through them and they do get work. It's just Well, that's the thing. Of, yeah. I know that people get work and they hire people from it yeah. for his ads and stuff that they do so i'm like I, I, i'll be in a local ad i'll be the right, person right. who looks concerned buying some <laughs> carpet i can be that person i always look concerned buying carpet. you just look concerned yeah, in general because you own a comedy oh, me club too. Oh, yeah. me too. i i always have a concerned look on my face yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. right so but so it's a, it's a mixture right of of the right place at the right time, of being mm-hmm. talented, a little luck is thrown in there. You just never know. Because there are some incredibly talented people that never break that, in, break it. They right. never break down that, the last door. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. You've had, like, a really cool career, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. I had fun. Like, you have such a long, like, you have a long filmography. Uh, I mean, the first thing that jumped out at me, well, well, first of all, A Talking Cat <laughs> was the first one. I'll be honest. That was because I remember when that became, like, a meme and was making its rounds. People were like, you have to see this trailer. And I'm like, get out. Get, yeah, it's hilarious because. <laughs> The story with that is when I came back to L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, to go back to work, sort of, I raised my kids while I was dragging yeah. my youngest. I said, dude, I don't care. We're, you're coming with me. Let's go. <laughs> but, uh, so when was that? It was like 11 years ago. And as, yeah. as we you know, talked about it, or I said, this business has changed so much. So, uh, you know, I you could go online. And, and and submit yourself if you joined Actors Access or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I did that. I I I saw. Oh, I'm I can do that part of a mother of a teenager. I said I yeah. am one. So I well, he was actually younger than I was he a teen yet. Okay, whatever. So I submitted myself and I get an instant response. Are you available? And I said yes, I'm available. Read any time. And he said, read. I know who you are. Can I send you the script? And I said, nice. uh, um, yeah, of course. <laughs> so that was Dave Dakota. So we ended up, I think, making five or six films together. Yeah. I, I joked with him. I joked with him at the end. I'm like, should we do the talking woodchuck next? <laughs> oh my god, I would love a talking Because I saw a talking pony as well. We saw so the yeah, talking pony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The two but talking dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Well, but here's the thing about is I met this girl, I forget where, or she came up to me and she said, Oh my god, you're Christine DeBell. Mm-hmm. And I said, Because she looked a little young, right? I'm like, You recognize me from Meatball? She said, no, a talking cat. My girlfriend and I love that movie. We get together for sleepovers and we just watch it over and over again. I'm like, oh my God, okay. It was, it was, it was precious. I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now, meat, meatballs growing up, that that was a favorite of mine, though. That was yeah. that that was I, I was excited to talk to you just because meatballs. When yeah. I was a kid, that was the that was a good camp coming of age kind of movie. Yeah, yeah that's the one that, that's always referenced when right. they're like a camp coming of age right. story. Right. They're like it's like meatballs with Alfredo. So I don't know what that's how you do I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I had half a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's you're you're allowed. Sometimes I have just a small piece of it. Yeah. Um, but 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 the, the thing is, is it really wasn't. You know, it was just like any others. But it's become such a cult. It's like it's like every many many people. Like I, as, as a matter of fact, just let me back up. I am shocked when I say to someone, "Have you seen me balls?" And they're like, uh, "No." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Like so many people. That's their go-to the beginning of the summer. They've got to watch me fall. Mm-hmm. At right. least there's an age group there of, the, you know, have, people that were teenagers, I guess, when that came out. Yeah. Right, when people came out. But listen to this. My son, who is then, maybe he was in second or third grade when me fall came out of Blu-ray. He was re-released on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And I had some of my girlfriends over right and seen it. And he said to me, Mom, I can't believe you have your friends over to watch you in a movie. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. And then, I swear, I swear to God, a week later, it's on HBO. And he's in the back seat. He goes, oh, my God, Mom. It's on HBO. <laughs> the back seat. Yeah. Yeah, it's all in perspective. It? <laughs> exactly. I get, yeah, exactly. The perspective of a second grader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's gonna be so weird. I've always wondered that, like with, um, like when you're when you're a performer and you have young kids like that, and uh, like just the reaction of what where it's like this is an important thing. Meh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Right. It's, it's like mom's in this, this. She gets together with some funny people. Like she thinks they're funny people, and they 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 film it. <laughs> It's real boring, <laughs> real boring stuff. It's like they're in a camp. Right. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? But, yeah, they, they're either a little jaded or, you know, there's an age where they, you know, it's like, yeah, that's mom's job. So, 
Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what she got sad or dead. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> Until, of course, you know, I mean, obviously, you're in a children's film or something that they can relate to, then it would be like, oh, my gosh, you're in the Lion Witch in the Wardrobe? Holy crap. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I always, I've heard, too, it's hard because sometimes people will take those jobs and then they'll be, like, cast as a voice actor. So if the kid is super <laughs> young, it's, like, just very confusing more than anything else. Like, Right, yeah. Like, wait. That talking right. cat sounds familiar. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> where so wait are a you? You've, you've seen a talking cat? I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the trailer a few times because it is a favorite. Uh <laughs> Oh my god! But I was like, it really, it just burned a hole into my skull. Like the first time I saw it, I was just like, "This is film. This is what. <laughs> this is the age we are now." Li- I mean, all it's like in bla- it, all those things you were saying, which is like there is an audience for talking animal pictures more oh, yeah. than can possibly be satisfied by well, any studio. Know, that's what he said. I remember going to a that was. Um, dis, dis, distributors, I guess. Was, yeah. That was, yeah. And he was saying, I was like, we're doing another talking animal movie? He goes, <laughs> it's huge in Europe. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, they can't get enough of it. I'm like, holy crap, who knew? It's like the Halloween puppy was with uh, um, uh, Eric Roberts, and then mm-hmm. Eric was, er, Eric, I think Eric was the cat in the talking. It was, oh my God, I, I'm confusing them now. I can't even think <laughs> which, which one the talking puppy was. Oh, that was, oh, no, that was Eric. That was the Halloween puppy, but they changed it because they wanted to sell other, you know what I'm saying? It came out at Halloween that I believe they changed the title. Is, isn't right. Eric Robertson a talking yeah. cat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, a talking cat. Oh, and I'm thinking about the puppy. Okay, whatever. Yeah, See what I mean? I yeah. just way too many. <laughs> Way too many. Yeah, because there was an Easter Bunny puppy, too. Because there's an so. Easter Bunny oh, yeah, puppy, the and there's a Halloween puppy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for I was Bunny, saying yeah. Disney's yeah. caught on to it, because I noticed that Disney Plus is like, sure, every week they have a new, like, talking animal or based on a true story animal, and I'm like, they, they are on to it. Like, everyone is on to There's this whole, <laughs> this whole sub-market that's yeah. just thriving yeah, right. of, like, right. animal pictures. Yeah. Um, right. You also got to work and, with. Oh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, and 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 Christmas movies now. Like oh, lifetime, yeah. So, because it said you have merrily. Well, I mean, what what is that about? Is that Christmas oh, or something it's else? It's hard to explain. Okay, so I one of the very first films, short films I did mm-hmm. was for, was for the the I think they were a Dutch couple, and it was kind of oh. odd. And I don't even know what ever happened with that. But the guy who played my uh, uh, boyfriend, I guess. Not that I can, I can barely. Remember. Well, we became friends. Yeah. So he, you know, he's kind of an actor, filmmaker, and he's made a couple of movies, and this is one of them. Um, and it's sort of the kind of movie he makes, which is hard to explain, meaning it's um, like a bunch of dream sequences, and hmm. he's still making. Yeah. It. So, yeah. so, and I think last time when I explained it, I used the word esoteric, but I think. That is incorrect. Anyway, I don't know what it's about. Because I just stepped in, did my scenes, and stepped out. And he's still working on it. So, But I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of dream sequences. Oh, that's fun. I, I've got a couple of those. And um, a couple of his films that are, and they're all sort of similar in that. So, so it's sort of I like an avant-garde, it. surrealist yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Those are lovely words. Those work, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I did a year at film school. <laughs> I know words. <laughs> See, I, I always love films that you can go in, do your scene, and get out, and don't have to worry about it. And then yeah. you, don't, yeah, you don't have you. to. Yeah, thank you don't you. have to think about. I don't it for know the story. I don't know what it's about. I didn't get the script. He yep. said, "This is what you're doing." I said, "Great, I'll do it." Because we're friends. Of course, I'm going to do it for him. Yeah. 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 I, I work with a director a lot, uh, William Lee, and he rewrites the script so many times that I don't even bother to read it. I just look at what I'm doing like, okay, here we are. I'll get the rest of it when the movie's out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speaking of rewrites, when I did um, um, Judge 
Harry Stout, you know. Oh, I, yeah, Night Court. Night Court. Night Court. Okay, so the thing about Night Court, and I'd never done this, is kind of cool. I was playing a rock star with girlfriend. I had to go in mm. early to have uh, do a uh, cover, like an album cover that he looks at at the end. I had to be photographed in some wacky 80s rock star <laughs> <classic. laughs> And, um... But anyway, so it's live, meaning that there's a live audience with that kind of canned laughter, that old school sitcom, and I've right. never done one of those. But here's the thing: so you rehearse all week, yeah, and then you do the show live on Friday, yeah. Okay, so we rehearse all week, and then we do the the uh, you know the rehearsal Friday, yeah. And I'm having dinner for an hour, whatever, I don't remember, but I remember it was at dinner before we're going to go do the show, and they said, you know, we're, we're really not keen on the opening. We've rewritten it here. Oh, <laughs> okay. An opening scene where he's interviewing me, and I'm like, okay, thank heavens I did a soap opera, and you used to have to memorize 11, <laughs> li- 11 pages of dialogue a night, because it was like, oh, right. okay, I'm going to memorize this while I dinner, and then we're going to go do the scene. Yep. <laughs> How was it being on Night Court? Because now we're now we're in the era that I was alive, <laughs> and, and that was great. That was I mean, one of my favorite comedies. Like as a kid, very young, I just was like the character actors, especially. I just was in love with it. Oh my god, the two in this one, the the two ladies when in this, yes. in this, the show that I did where they're at the door saying male, female, like betting on you know the sex <laughs> of who's walking into the restroom and. Yeah, the guy who played, yeah, David, or uh, uh, Laura Larroquette, Larroquette, John Larroquette. Yeah, yeah. John Larroquette, yeah. yeah. No, this, it was an amazing cast. He was a sweetheart, and it was a really wonderful experience. And as I said, also the, my first time doing live a live show, or, you know, a taping, let's see it. How was that? Live. So you but brought up... An audience. Well, you brought up doing the soap opera, which has some similarities. You know, it's sort of the, I assume that the, because the, uh, I don't know, do they do multi-camera with, with the soap opera? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's yes. all that proscenium-esque. But there's not an audience. See, this yeah. thing is a multi, but yeah, there's an audience. So with the yeah, soap opera, you have to do 11 pages, yeah. <laughs> memorize yeah. every night. And yeah. were you were you on it for a long time? Did you do like one character? I, for... Actually, the, the way I, I got my, it started was I did an after-school special where I played a runaway. I oh, okay. Think. And the producer the producers really liked me because I could cry on cue. Oh. And so they brought me back as this other character that was like, I think it was on for about 10, almost a year. Ooh, and, nice. but, you know, she was a really, I had to cry. I was like, I'm like, you guys, what if the tears dry up? And they're like, you know, they're not going to. Like, okay. <laughs> Just so, hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> drink, yeah. drink water. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that happened actually when I was doing the short for my friend that we were just talking about. Yeah. And I was doing work he was doing a scene with this girl, and I sat there, and he said, yeah, think of something sad, and I just started to well up, and she goes, holy crap, how do you do that? (laughs) I said, I think of something sad. (laughs) <laughs> exactly what you suggested. So the, uh, the, the, I, no, oh, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. The, the line would be, I thought of something really sad. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, the, the show we were talking about was The Young and the Restless, correct? Yeah, The okay. Young and the Restless. Yeah. We used to call it The Hung and the Restless. Yeah. <laughs> or The Young and the Rest of Us also. Yeah, <laughs> I think that might be a good episode title. Yeah, that is a good episode <laughs> title. Don likes to come up with episode titles based on weird, out of context things people say during the. Uh, right. Also, yeah. they would double as good like band names or like yeah, improv yes. troops. Yeah, one of my favorite things. So. Yeah. 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 No. Hey. Hey. I get it. Fine. Yeah. Absolutely. You also got to work with Jackie Chan. Yeah. It was. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I actually had been. They hired me, I think I, I, I got the part before, at some, let's say at some point. And then a friend of mine is driving, and he may have had too much to drink. I don't know, you <laughs> did. I, so I, I was the passenger and went through the windshield. Well, oh, no. not through it, but banged my head and ended up in the ER with stitches. So they held up the production until my face healed. Whoa. It was like, wow. Because, you know, like... It's like, holy crap, they could have just hired somebody else, you know, knowing that now. I guess I didn't think about it. I don't remember thinking about it at the time, but now it's like, that was so sweet of them. And Jackie Chan is hilarious. He's just like, 
you know, I say this stuff about Bill. I mean, Bill Murray was yeah. in mm-hmm. person exactly the way he was on set. And Jackie Chan, too. The sweetest guy. But I feel like I spent most of my evenings going over his lines. No, it sounds like this. Try to say, I w- went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah. So we worked on our lines every night, and I tried to help him with his English. But, yeah, that was it was a wonderful experience. We spent six weeks in San Antonio. Yeah, because uh, that was Battle Creek Brawl. That was uh, that was Jackie. W- was that his first American film? Yeah, his first American film. I thought yep. so. Yeah, and you played yeah. his girlfriend in that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I, yep. We we watched some of your reel. It too, looked like <laughs> yeah. It looked like wrestlers and stuff like that. I, again, I'm not. Yeah. I, I, I'm known for that. I play everybody's girlfriend. I was <laughs> well, not, no, not. Oh, maybe I'll take it back. I wasn't anyone. Oh, I was Todd Hoffman's girlfriend. In <laughs> but yeah, like in Blood in Blood Brothers, I played Richard Gere's girlfriend, and yeah. that was his first film. And wow. then, uh, yep, and then Becky's girlfriend in his first American. How was how was it working with? Uh, uh, yeah, Blood Brothers was like he's a working. Cl- he's like blue collar something. Oh, I can't remember what the synopsis was. It up into the mountains again. Uh-oh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I guess you're going to be cutting out this part. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get to the part as quickly as possible. <laughs> Still. Yep, we lost her. I thought, yeah, that's <laughs> cell phone reception in the mountains. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, you're bouncing back okay. and forth, but yeah, you're there. I- Okay, okay, cool. As long as uh, it doesn't go dead here, but I, okay, I'm at the top. We should be good. All right. Okay. We've reached the top of the mountain. <laughs> so. Yep. <laughs> People don't think of LA as having mountains, right? Okay, it's a hill, okay, yeah. or it's a small mountain. <laughs> That's okay. Am I out again? Nope, you're good. No, you're here. You're here. I'm just picturing like driving on the highway and through the mountains or oh, hills. Oh. Or whatever. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I'm driving through the Hollywood Hills. That's exactly where yeah. I am. <laughs> Is that what you just said, the Hollywood Hills? Oh, I was thinking, like, well, yeah, like, I, I'm trying to remember what freeway, but I don't know. And then you see sometimes, like, windmills and you get farther out. And I'm, I'm, I'm oh. having a weird montage of different time periods <laughs> right now going through my head of driving on <laughs> California freeways. And I'm not even sure where I am in time and space. Like, is this when I was driving out to... Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, that beep. Did, that was me. Okay. You know, driving out to Joshua Tree or Desert Oh yeah, that's or... the that's it that's the one all the ones. It's the the one the one oh one to the ten to yeah. the one what yeah. I've spent a lot of time in one oh one. Like that's I mean, you know, during touristy stuff and whatnot. Right. When, uh, when were you out here? Uh I mean well, the Joshua Tree, I visited a friend in San Diego um, a few years ago. I feel like it was, well, it was when I met my boyfriend, so it would have been 2016 because I missed him. We went to Las Vegas, and we went to Joshua Tree. We did, like, a whole thing. Oh, oh yeah, it was great. It was a perfect girls' weekend. And, uh, I don't Wait know. a minute. Wait a minute. A perfect girls' meeting didn't you choose? Weekend? Didn't you just say you met your boyfriend? Yeah, well, I missed him during that, and I was being like, trying to be like, I'm here for you, my friend, who's going through things, but also like the whole time texting him and sending him pictures and being like, I'm here for you, but also I have this new guy I'm dating who I'm still with, and I'm like taking pictures the whole time and going to clubs with her because she was kind of having, you know relationship still, stuff are you still are you still with him because he sounds a little he sounds a little needy <laughs> <laughs> i'm still with him for no okay so i'm sorry he's, I'm so he's sorry. really no it, i guess it's the thing when you know it's good when you're the one who also is like because i the guy i was dating before that that was the case where i'm like why he's like testing me to see how long it would take me to text him each day and like would I text him enough and it's like well I guess that's the thing I don't really care that much you know what I mean I'm not that interested and <laughs> yeah, right. but then I met like, this guy me? and I'm like ooh, texting him all day every day and I'm like you know sending him little you know gifts and things and okay. I love I it. it yeah but yeah, he no, he does but he does film stuff too so to him like what's really great is he understands like 
you have to be away, you know what I mean, to do your work and stuff. And you have to take opportunities when they, they come to you. Like today we were supposed to go to Ikea. Yeah. And, and I'm here. here. Are, <laughs> doing radio and here you are. And here you are. And I'm so glad you are here with me. I'm kind so glad to talk to you. Me. This is Cyber. great. Yep, I, I was uh, looking at through uh, your filmography and everything, and I, I just thought it was funny that we've worked with some of the same people. Because I, I recently, I was in a uh, TV series that just released on Amazon that was actually narrated by Eric Roberts. And Samurai Cop 2, you worked with Mel Novak, who I worked with in uh, one of my films through William Lee. So I thought that was a fun little tidbit that we've worked with some of the same actors. Yeah, and it's, uh, that is cool. And I was going to say, it's not surprising with Eric Roberts. I mean, how many, how, isn't, doesn't he do a film a day? Something like that. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't he have, he could have the most, the largest, um, you know how they say, oh, I think I'm at what, 50? Yeah, I think maybe he's done 300. It's like, what the heck? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always fun to look at people's IMDb pages. when. <laughs> yeah, when you see like a million, you're just like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> is he worried about le- losing his SAG card? <laughs> what is happening? Oh. All right. Yeah, no, I think he just loves to work, I guess. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, we're going to take a we're going to take a real quick break. Uh, just do station ID and everything like that because we still have to do that. Uh, if you stick around, we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more, and we might hit some news stories and uh, see what kind of silly stuff we can come up with there. So uh, stick around. We will be right back on the Life Radio Show. Steps on hot cement I don't know where he went But he left In a hurry He's saying something about A mission of mercy Mama Hasn't been sleeping well at all As she lies stretched out in the hall Waiting for him to all the mercy of his mission still isn't quite clear He had a different angle than what it would appear now, I don't know where he went, but he left in such a hurry He's saying something about a mission of mercy Hasn't been sleeping well at all As she lies stretched out in the hall Waiting for him to call us Please someday At least you could explain Call us please someday Oh, I never knew Mama hasn't been sleeping well at all As she lies stretched out in the hall It doesn't seem like my mama at all She's waiting there for him to call us
Now you've been staring over that edge for hours. And people die down there. And dying when you're not really sick is really sick, you know? Really. All right. Hey, welcome back to the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith. We are still sitting in Wiley's Comedy Club showroom uh, yeah, with yeah, my yeah. guest co-host, Adrian Miller. Hello. And we are still on the phone with Christine DeBell. Uh, Hi. Yeah, she, she's she's made it to a stopping point, so she's not We're driving back. up and down hills anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we might be able to keep her keep her on the line longer now, but uh, yeah, and we were talking about games, gaming, and yes. games in the, in fun, the middle of the break, yeah. fun games with friends, yeah, board games, especially not the, not the, all the electronic well, stuff, anymore. like trivia trivia games for people who don't quite remember things, right? I specifically, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. It's like Trivial Pursuit. We used to play that so much, oh. and they're like, oh yeah. Play in the eighties. Let's play Trivial Pursuit. It's like I don't have a brain for that game. Yes, <laughs> I'm like I don't know any of these things. I'm never getting remember. a slice. If I get one slice, I'm like I've won. Yep. <laughs> you should just I play the one. one slice. That's all you. <laughs> it's like catching the golden snitch in in Harry Potter. I got yeah. one. That's how yes. that's how it works, right? You get one slice and then you win. <laughs> Sounds fair. Yeah. Right? Whoever gets any. Question correct. Was that my That's family? Like, <laughs> Were they just being really nice? Taking <laughs> pity on me? It was like the, the uh, Family Guy episode where they make Peter think he's smart by giving him the kids' edition while they are. Yeah. <laughs> I need the kids' edition. Uh, That's the level I'm operating at. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. well, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> not for you. Of course not. Right. Me, yeah. I would right. definitely need the kids' edition. I can, oh, yes, I know that answer. Hi. <laughs> What does the J and PBJ stand for? <laughs> I know this one. Because <laughs> it's peanut butter jelly time. And it. then you but, say yeah. jam, and it's right. like, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> it's jelly. Yeah. Then you, no, you just no. have, <laughs> Then you just have to argue the point for the rest. Yeah, exactly. Of the game, yeah. And then it becomes like that's how board games always end. My destroy, family is always yeah, with that's, arguments. That's anyway. how you destroy yeah. every relationship you have yeah. with everyone around you. Yeah. Trivia yeah, games. Yeah, that, that's how I keep from uh, having to buy Christmas presents for family members. I break out the board games during Thanksgiving. Doesn't say Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the trick. Yeah, no, I, my guys. We were. It's like if one year the boys were home and they're like, "Wait a minute, mom, why is the Monopoly board not set up?" You know. <laughs> It's like every holiday was like working on the, you know, a never ending Monopoly game. Ugh. <laughs> well, I was thinking on the way here, one of my most cherished family memories is uh, my mother. She always bragged about how as a kid they would play Risk and how she would always wipe the floor with all of her siblings, parents, everybody. Uh, cause she was a mathlete and anyway, mm. we're, this, this show isn't about any, about her. She's not here, <laughs> but then she would play against me and my sister and she would hold no punches. She would, she would, she would just go full out. Doesn't matter just if you're a kid or a minor what, yeah. world domination yeah, well. first. That is the rules well, of risk. Exactly. <laughs> there are no family ties. <laughs> no, <laughs> she uses when the Kamchatka strategy. Home. That's her treasured strategy. Capture Kamchatka. And then you can capture the world. That's right. apparently the key. <laughs> but me and my sister, we decided to just form an alliance <laughs> against her one day. And, and bring her down. Bring yes. her to heal. We actually, we set up a system. It wasn't like we could like crush her outright, but we just created a war of attrition. So she would lose like two pieces every round. With no end in sight. And they're like, we could keep going. And she's like, this isn't fair. Yeah, she's we like, do this all night. And she's like, and we're like, there's no rules in the rules about forming an alliance. <laughs> this is like the real world. This right. is what happens. Yes. We are a corporation. Get over yes. It. Real world risk. <laughs> we have formed an international conglomerate. <laughs> Deal <right>. with it. <laughs> all right. We should probably hit some news yes. stories. Yes. Find out what's going on in the world out there. Because we, we cover the important news here on The Life. Uh, oh, North, got it. Oh, yeah. North Carolina police <laughs> were searching Monday for a man dubbed, quote, the uh, pantsless prowler Whoa. after several home security cameras spotted him lurking in a neighborhood after dark at least once without wearing any shorts, investigators said. <laughs> The, quote, sometimes half-naked man, believed to be in his 20s or 30s, was seen scurrying across the front and side yards in the Riverwood Athletic Club neighborhood uh, in Clayton, about 17 miles southeast of Raleigh, the Clayton Police Department wrote Monday on Facebook. Uh, police released a montage of home surveillance <laughs> videos... <laughs> 
in the hope that the public can help identify him. In most footage, the man appears uh, to wear a baseball cap, a blue sweatshirt, and a jacket, and a light blue shorts with white socks and black shoes. However, in one clip, he appears uh, to not be wearing any shorts as he runs across the street and crouches down in a backyard near a grill. What? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think the real mystery here is what happened to his pants. Yeah. I think the concern should be about him because he got attacked somewhere along the way and was pantsed. Yeah. And someone took his pants. Yeah. Right. And of course they posted it on their Facebook page because That's, that is yeah. how news gets spread today. Yeah. that is, Well, that is how police investigations uh, get cracked. Did they, is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it just, do they put it to, do they, they, the, you know, a good montage is really on the strength of the score. Right, and the I, song I think I think the young man needs to use that in his acting reel. He should put it in his demo reel, yeah. definitely. <laughs> he shows he can work under difficult circumstances right, right. without <laughs> pants. He's like Game of Thrones. I see right. you. <laughs> I am totally yeah, cool I, with running around in the wilderness with no pants. Right, and I look good. Yeah, right. check it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at these thighs. <laughs> <laughs> these are not ideal shooting conditions they right. do not have good lighting on right. these security cameras oh yeah they're no. the security <laughs> cameras <laughs> yeah those are that's always grainy bad footage anyway yeah. so if you look good if you can that, see you the definition yeah. of those thigh muscles oh yeah and that's in all the it grainy takes, right? footage it's like <laughs> damn <laughs> <sighs> An airport in Lithuania took an unusual approach to holiday decorating when it assembled a Christmas tree out of the confiscated items. Uh, Lithuanian airport (laughs) said the the tree in the uh, Vilnius airport was assembled from prohibited items that were seized by security officers during the screening process. Uh, Photos of the, quote, educational masterpiece tree (laughs) uh, show hundreds of pairs of scissors as well as knives, box cutters, lighters, and other goods deemed too dangerous to allow on planes. Uh, So if you don't want your personal yet prohibited belongings to land on next year's Christmas tree, better check that baggage baggage requirements before you pack for your next flight, uh, Lithuanian Airport said. That's great. That's great. It was a public service kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Christmas tree, yeah. Very it's, educational. It's so creative. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I do have to say with all the deadly implements, uh, it's one tree that the Grinch will not be stealing. Right. Well, it's also yeah, right. one It's also one that you don't want your uncle to get drunk and fall in no. top of. No. Right. <laughs> or maybe you do. Maybe or, you do. Yeah, it depends on yeah. your feelings toward your uncle. I mean, my so. dad was saying that he looked at this, there's a store he was at and they had a bunch of aluminum trees. Lunar Christmas trees. And I said, ah, those look great. You can use them as an antenna. He said, or to electrocute your whole family right, when they go right. to fix it. And I was like, I like, could be a good thing depending on the family and whether you took out life insurance policies on them. Also a life hack. <laughs> Aluminum trees. Look into it. Oh, oh, that light looks like it's blinking, uh, Cousin Carl. Yeah, go check go, that. Go check it. Go check it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get that? I just, oh, I just got this drink. Just go, go investigate. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? It's like you know how when you get a string of lights and then they put in the extra little, you know, connector with the wires, the yes. bulbs. And it's like, oh yeah, you can change these. I would swear now. Okay, are you kidding me? <laughs> you cannot. Uh, you know, times I've tried to change, the bulbs won't come out, and forget about getting the whole thing out. It's like. Just buy another string. Yeah, that's yeah. the easiest way to we do had, it. We had to throw out multiple strings of light. We got some cheap cheap ones at Target. And and it's like, yeah, they send you like two or three light bulbs. However, on average, about six burn out right. <laughs> every year. And you're like, what hey, am I it, supposed it, to do with this? At least it's not like the old school ones that were in series where one goes out and the whole thing's oh, doing. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah remember, right, exactly. Uh, First time I ever had to hang lights, they were like that. So, it'd, like, you'd fix one, and you're like, well, part of it lit up now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. they just moved yeah. on the line. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting progress, <laughs> progress. Oh, my God. I always plug them in first, but, you know. Yeah. And then if it's, but still, it's like, seriously? Yeah. Uh, I like that the LEDs are less likely to burn out, at least. Yeah. Yeah, they tend to last a they little last longer. They last a little yeah, longer. But they have an odd blue light. Yeah, well, they have the like the the warm glow ones, kind of are more orangey. 
almost kind of like a oh. sodium light sometimes or like a weird white. I don't, know, I don't know how to describe the quality of the light, but it's a little weird because we, we had replaced, obviously, many of our light bulbs <laughs> for Christmas. Yeah. And we have a mix now on the the main tree of like incandescent traditional twinkle light ones. And then we got some LED ones and we got the right. warm glow, but they look weird. <laughs> I don't know. I, I It's like I have some regular and then I, I had one string of LED and you put them next to each other and it's like, wow, it's weird. It's weird. They also vibrate. They have like a weird, like, um, I think they, I think they pulsate or something at a certain frequency and you can sometimes see it to, when they see them together, it's like a weird, like blinking almost, but it's hyper fast. Like it's, it's almost like. That cuts the mushrooms you were talking about earlier. I mean, okay, I like mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, so sue me. Maybe I pick some random ones and just see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> might be diarrhea, <laughs> might be a nice trip. We'll yep. find out. <laughs> um, uh, firefighters in Washington State said a horse... 70s. Dan- <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, firefighters in Washington State say a horse named Touch of Generator uh, lived up to its name when he became entangled in an active power line. No. Uh, Graham Fire and Rescue said a transformer blew on the on the horse owner's property and a Touch of Generator ended up entangled in the active power line that fell. Uh, Puget Sound Energy cut the power to the line and firefighters extinguished the transformer and cut the horse free from the line. Uh, firefighter said Touch of Generator was not moving when they arrived, but he checked out. Uh, he was checked out by Wildflower Veterinary Services and found to be suffering from only minor muscular strain. So, oh really? Touch, of, gen- touch of Generator is all right. He's, he only uh, he only had a Touch of just Generator. Just a Touch of Generator. Yes, <laughs> he can handle it. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but. yeah, just a touch. Wow, that's crazy. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, if he had a little less touch of generator, he might not have survived the shock from the power line. Yeah, so, yeah. He, yeah. Was, he he was all it he was, was true all to his part name. of it. Yeah, that a was, horse uh, a horse's name. He was named that in the prophecy. Yes, that that, was... exactly. They had a prophetic vision. <laughs> right. They're like, I don't know what to what do you think uh, about what to name that that new horse, Earl? Yes. I thought. Yep, I, I had this vision. Yep, I think that horse going to have a touch of generator. I had a vision of him taking a power line. Yeah. <laughs> Call him touch a generator. Yep, and now he has superpowers. So, exactly. Yes. Well, probably. Yeah, he's probably a flying horse now. He's probably yeah, a talking right, horse. Exactly. He's a talking, talking horse. horse. That's the next movie. That's the origin story. You have to pitch this to David. <laughs> Well, no, 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 no. I did do a talking pony. Right. I know. I did do a, t- yeah. Oh, I see. It is. Yes, it is the talking horse. Or yeah, you have the next iteration. <laughs> he could also just be, you know, the next uh, uh, Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you should pitch that to him. Say, like, as you know, your animal films are doing great. Also, <laughs> what if we brought in the superhero genre, also very popular, right. bring them together? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Yeah, it would be X animals. Yeah, it would be X horses. <laughs> X horse. X horse. <laughs> you can have, oh my God, you could have, they could all be like, yeah, you could have a whole team up even. And you could be, <laughs> okay, uh, when I get, when I'm, when I'm having insomnia, I do watch Too Cute Confession Time. I do, I am one of the people that they make these animal things for. When I, I need something not challenging and just adorable to drift off to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they could have a whole team up. That would be adorable. I would love it. Well, I, I would watch. It. I do have a few that you can watch in the wee hours. <laughs> I should. I, I really should. I'm sure. I'm sure a few of them would put me to sleep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, let's see. Twas the week before Christmas when a creature uh, was in fact stirring, and that creature was a chicken. <laughs> On Thursday, Molly Sanley, a political organizer, uh, tweeted about the odd thing she spotted wandering on the street outside a restaurant in Park Slope, Brooklyn, a rogue and fancy ter- uh, chicken. Oh, he's fancy. A fancy chicken, He's fancy. Yeah. Did he have a top hat? Uh, it must have. It was, try- <laughs> it was trying to roost on top of their inflatable Santa and kept collapsing <laughs> under his weight. <laughs> Uh, she said that, that the chicken, a rooster, which uh, she named Elizabeth Warhen, uh, a rooster. It's a rooster, though. But yeah, it's very not, confusing. Yeah, not a not a hen. They so clearly only yeah. know half a metaphor. Okay, okay. A rooster, okay. which she named Elizabeth Warhen, appeared Warhen. to be very cold and very hungry, but basically healthy. 
Uh, while it's not too surprising <laughs> to see some wild things roaming about in Brooklyn, uh, the chicken did not appear to belong to any anyone nearby and seemed to need help. Uh, we were out doing laundry, so I had a blanket with us. Uh, we wrapped the chicken in it, uh, found a cardboard box, and carried it home. Uh, uh, said and Sam, now uh, they have chicken. <laughs> exactly. Uh, said Sandley, who added that, uh, that they put the rooster in, quote, a bathroom with some food and water and that he's still there now. Wow. So now, <laughs> now they okay, just said. So, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know where that chicken came from. It escaped from this place in Brooklyn where you can go and pick out your chicken and then they get it down, chop off his head and give you the chicken to take home and roast. Yes. He was or, far too fancy for that. Yeah. He was like, I am too fancy yeah. for I, this sort of establishment. I, I belong in, I belong in Park Slope. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> or, I am a Good day. <laughs> He's a rooster. He will not even have that much meat on his bones. He's I know. Right, exactly. He's like, what am I doing not- here? <laughs> <laughs> I am a manly chicken. Yep. I want you to know that I am right now standing in the Hollywood Hills looking down at a chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> My friend that I'm house sitting for has five hens. Oh, are, really? Are they, are they fancy? Do you want a cluck? No, they're just Rhode Island Reds and just oh, right okay. here. Can you hear them cluck? Hi, girls. Who's laying? Hello. Yeah, they're pretty cute. <laughs> do they do they get like eggs from them? Like fresh eggs? He said she gets an egg a day, but um, I, but the thing is, I know because I grew up with chickens that if you want them to to lay in the winter, you have to put a light in there because they need twelve right. hours of yeah. light to lay. And so when the sun sets at four, she's not getting any eggs. Yeah, right, I saw you right. grew up on a farm. Like, what kind of farm was it? You had chickens, obviously. Yeah. Chickens. We we actually grew all of the meat and yeah the, yeah, that we ate. Whoa. We raised. Uh, did I say grow? Yes. Well, right. Yeah. Well, well, I knew you meant. <laughs> they were growing while we raised them. Right. Yeah. Right. If you're growing meat, that's some kind of a laboratory. Experiment, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're working well, on I, that right now. Yes, I'm pretty I, sure. I'm growing the meat. <laughs> in, well, no. I hey, now I don't eat meat. So the meat that I'm eating was probably grown in a laboratory. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, the I Impossible am, Burger. I, the... I eat a lot of Morning <laughs> Star Farms. I am a huge uh, fan. Okay. I was talking so about wait a minute. Yeah. I read an article, Impossible Burger, Beyond Burger. They yeah. said the Impossible Burger is first. Bologna, I say. <laughs> I like the Beyond Burger. Have you guys tasted either? I have not. Uh, yeah, I've had the Beyond Burger. I've had, yeah, my my boyfriend, he he actually, thought, he was amazed. Like, he had that, that same, like most people have, where he put it on the grill, the charcoal grill. And he's like, it bled. He's like, Adrian, <laughs> it bled. How is that possible? What? What That's is this? <laughs> I know. I like beet juice. But, I don't know. but yeah, it was, oh, it was really God. good. Like it's, it's very close, very yeah. close to, I just, to real like, beef. I just, I didn't, you know, I'm just, I'm always asking people, which do you prefer? Cause I, I'm not so sure. I, 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 I've had both and the, I think the beyond burger is better than the impossible one. Well, we can get the Beyond Burger like at Kroger. Like it's much more accessible because I think they have that and they have some sausages, which I don't understand why they don't have more vegetarian sausages. I think I love vegetarian sausages. Beyond makes them, but you probably can't. But wait one second. Don't you have here? What? What's that? Possible. And Carl's Jr. has the uh, Beyond. Yeah, I think they have them at some fast food restaurants. I just don't eat fast food as much. Yeah, I don't think we don't have Carl's Jr. here. We have Hardee's. Yeah, Hardee's. Which is, but I think like Burger King maybe has one now where yeah, they're Burger working King on has it. The and impossible. and yeah. a few others. I know they're rolling. Yeah, that would out. be impossible. Ha yeah. ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, getting good service at a Burger King. I'd say is I want to try impossible. the highly unlikely Big Mac. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only time I eat fast food is coming back from from comedy open mics. So it has to be open when you've given after up midnight. Hope. <laughs> yeah, basically when I'm like, I actually do have two extra dollars in my. Bag bank account right now that has i paid I, I filled up on gas so i'm good for at least a couple days and then i can get something at the dollar menu either at go. wendy's or mcdonald's whatever is open <laughs> and i can eat while driving so taco bell's out because that i've gotten in so many almost accidents trying to eat taco bell while driving because the little meat goes everywhere <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. It a, was it a taco hell or was it a <laughs> I don't know, but they. I said I read. I said that you you use soy meat in your tacos, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, we do." And then I read that that's a lie, and I'm, oh my god, ugh. <laughs> 
<laughs> it would be better if they did, to be honest, because it's barely meat to begin with. That's that's. True, I yeah. I would prefer like that's that's my thing with the with the vegetarian people are like it's weird, but I'm like you know a lot of the stuff you eat is pretty not great. Okay, I would rather I feel safer eating soy you know processed product yeah, than yeah. some of the processed meat products. Yeah, I'm not a fan yeah. of processed meat products. I'm, I'm less likely like, to get E. coli. Meat, far but, yeah. less likely. <laughs> No, processed meat's very scary, and I yeah. don't eat soy either. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I should. I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's my me and my dad. We sit around and discuss what's going to kill us this week, according to the latest research, and we'll now be banned from right, our exactly. diets. Right, exactly. It changes a lot. <laughs> <But> <laughs> All right. For, for our next news Nearly. story, for our next news story, do we want to go dark or silly? Uh, oh, I like dark. You Ooh, okay. like dark? Okay, we'll go dark. <laughs> A man whose body was discovered in a freezer inside a Utah apartment last month is believed to have been dead for a decade and left, a, left a note behind stating his wife didn't kill him. <laughs> 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 Authorities were conducting a welfare check on November 22nd when they found 75-year-old uh, Jean Saron Mathers uh, dead inside her apartment of natural causes in the uh, town of Toil. Uh, about 35 miles southwest of Salt Lake City. When police conducted a further search of the apartment, they found the body of 69-year-old Paul Edward Mathers uh, in a freezer. In addition to the body, investigators found a notarized letter signed by Paul Mathers stating his wife did not kill him. (laughs) It was notarized on December 2, 2008. Uh, co well, Police char- Sergeant uh, Jeremy Jansen uh, said, uh, we believe he had a terminal illness. Air with tight. a note <laughs> it's notarized and you can't dispute yeah. it <laughs> well his wife was a notary so <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say that's probably what the deal was <laughs> yeah that one was a little dark <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like i left everything to my wife and then she dies too it's like oh right <laughs> well she she had 10 years with him in the freezer so uh, 10 years oh, she never I... bothered to th- Report. <laughs> well, do you think? Do you think maybe she was collecting social social security or something? That's a possibility. Or yeah. some sort of benefit <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. She would have gotten it anyway. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. She's one of those. I. I know. Edna told me that goes away okay. if he I just dies. Don't like to I throw just, things away. I don't. <laughs> okay, wait, one second. Wait, 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 wait. Let's discuss if there was ever a power outage. Oof. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, yeah. you know it, it's it's Utah. Place. You know, some winter there was a bad one storm, and they, yeah, you, you know go they, from Taco yeah. Bell meat to that, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Ugh. Okay, I, hold on. I've got to throw up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those hoarders will keep anything. That's what. That's I think that's the moral of this story right there. Is, <laughs> I you, might need him someday. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you never know. If, yeah, if, I might need to thaw him out and yeah. prop him up. It's cryogenics. Cry- she thought yeah, she just cryogenic. Yeah, budget. Yeah. You could eat him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if if there was, if the apocalypse comes, I mean, yeah. you know. Well, you said well, it was in it, Utah. Not if it's a zombie Wait, apocalypse. Wait, you said it was in Utah. It was, yes. Oh, my God. If she's Mormon, you're supposed to have like a year or so worth of, of food supplies. There you go. <laughs> That's yeah. like part of the belief, like, you know, to be prepared yep. for Paul's if, the if like, the apocalypse or something else happens. Well, they, because that of makes their, sense. Their history. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, she's like, I can't afford those fancy buckets. Those, right. those millionaire <laughs> Romneys can afford. Yeah. I, I need, <laughs> I'm just going to keep my husband and then I, you know, I'm good with God. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, maybe she just couldn't afford the funeral, too. Though. I, mean, I know. It's not cheap. Yeah, she couldn't just put him out in the backyard and burned him and sprinkled his well, ashes. In there. And then it's too many questions at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, people, like, right, exactly. People would say, "What the <laughs> blank is that smell?" Yeah, that's that's what's yeah. That's that's good. There wasn't a power outage for any length of time, or she yeah, would, you know. Well, if she maybe she keeps a gen, maybe she had touched a generator. And his there you superpower. Go. Yes. Yep. That's we put this together now. Was Touch that, a generator. Just kept, need to just need to hook up powered. the, the yes. power to him. Yeah, I like I like that the police came out to do a wellness check on her, but they didn't do it ten years no. ago on him when he stopped yeah. showing up places. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know, Bill, old yeah, Bill. He, yeah, Bill. He didn't get out much. He didn't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of keep that, to himself type. I guy. haven't seen him in about ten years. Yeah, if you knew his wife, you would have moved too. <laughs> Oh, as much as I hate to say it, we're about out of time. 
Oh my gosh, you guys! It was yeah. so much fun hanging out with you this it, afternoon. It absolutely was. I'm so glad I got to talk to you uh, again. Before before we're out of time, I want you to throw uh, your social media out there, how people can get a hold of you, where they can follow you, and uh, and uh, any anything else that you want to throw out. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all just Christine DeBell. Christine DeBell at Instagram. Christine DeBell at Facebook. Christine DeBell at Twitter. So there you go. All right. And yeah. IMDb. Check her out on there and see her, her filmography and everything that she's done there. Yeah, talking this and talking that. Yeah, talking yeah. All, the, all the talking animals all that she's All the talking animals. We, you've heard <laughs> it here. And they're available on video. Yeah. You just buy them. You should just plan them. a sleepover with your friends. Right. Maybe yes. bring drugs. All bring all mushrooms. Watch all, yeah. <laughs> all the talking animal films. Yes, being very high is absolutely a must. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, that's just good advice in daily life anyway. Yeah, life hacks. We're all about life hacks here. <laughs> well, it is the life. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's in the name. Uh, th- thank you, thanks again, Christine, so much for calling in. It's, it's been great talking to you. And, yeah, uh, same here. You guys have a great rest of your day. Yep, yeah, you too. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, and happy holidays. It yep. is that yep. time of year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Happy holidays. happy holidays. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. All right, Adrian. That, that was Christine DeBell. Uh, check her out. So, a, a lot of fun to talk to. Really fun. So much really fun. fun. Uh, and thank you again, Adrian, for coming in on short notice and, no have, and having even on short notice more preparation done than I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> I try. <laughs> much appreciated. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, be sure to check us out next week. We'll probably be doing some other stuff with some other people. And, and I'll be enjoying my IKEA meatballs. And you'll be enjoying it all ties IKEA together. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have to put those together? Uh, yes. Ikea? Yeah, you have, have to assemble to... them yourself. It's very okay. strange. They just they set you up in front of a food prep thing, and they're like, okay. assemble it. They, they, and they have those like <laughs> weird, like no no words, like graphic. Can you pay a little extra and to... have somebody put them together for you? Because I'm not. Yes, they have know. a task okay. rabbit. Uh, task... You can hire task rabbit. You can hire somebody to come in as, as a contractor and put the meatball together for okay, you. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into that. All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Life Radio Show. Uh, Tune in next week. Uh, We're out of here. Thanks for listening to the Life Radio Show podcast. Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, if you want to listen live, we are on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM. You can also stream the show live at WWSU1069.org, and we go Facebook Live at the Life Radio Show's Facebook page. If you have suggestions or comments, feel free to email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Overwhelms me. A brutal presence. Oh, yes, I know that answer. <laughs> <laughs>